Welcome to CoreKind today for December 19th, 2019. This is the show where I break down some of the biggest stories happening in the world of CoreKind right now and give you my opinion on them. Now, this is my opinion. If you want to check out the show notes down below, I'll put a link to each story there so you can read about them for yourself and come up with your own opinions. I'd love to hear from you. If you're new here, do me a huge favor. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that thumbs up. It really does help us because it lets YouTube know you enjoy what we do here. And hopefully we can help you break free from the high cost of cable TV and still watch the shows you enjoy. Well, real quick before we get into the deals and the news of the day, don't forget we have a giveaway going on, a brand new giveaway that just started for a 2019 Roku Ultra, a Tableau DVR for your antenna, and a $100 Netflix gift card. This is a great giveaway going to one special viewer or reader. Many ways to enter for a chance to win. Check out the show notes down below. You don't have to do all of them, but the more you do, the more chances you get to enter. So check out down below in the giveaway for a chance to win a Roku Ultra, Tableau DVR, and a $100 Netflix gift card. Also, if you're thinking about um, something to watch um, over the holidays, Stars has a deal going on right now where you can get three months of Stars for just five bucks a month. Now, this isn't five bucks or everything, it's five bucks a month month on that deal so check it out link in the show it's down below three months of stars or five bucks a month full price thereafter if you're been thinking about trying out something new over the holidays to watch some movies some tv shows and more all right let's get in the news today because a ton is happening spacex as we've talked about in the past is getting close to launching a home internet service we talked about amazon's one recently I've been getting a lot of questions about SpaceX and launching their own home internet service. So we sat down and we broke out everything you need to know about the new SpaceX home internet service so you can check them out for yourself. And then down in the show notes down below, I put a link to each um, to the story so you can read all about this. But in short, SpaceX says they're going to launch a home internet service from space. I'll explain that part in a minute. Um, in 2020. They're hoping to have it live by the hurricane season in 2020, so sometime in the summer of next year, I'm assuming, we'll see SpaceX launch a home internet service. Now, this will be different than current internet services, which are very high orbit satellites locked in a fixed position. These are very low Earth orbit satellites and a network of them that's designed to offer distributed um, internet there at far faster speeds with better latency and more than current satellite internet. Uh, SpaceX says they hope to make this very affordable internet, paraphrasing there, where this would be an affordable internet service for core cutters. So check it out and let me know, would you sign up for SpaceX? Amazon's doing this, a few others are. Are you more interested in SpaceX or are you more interested in Amazon's home internet service? Leave me a comment, let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Good news if you're somebody who still has PlayStation View. A couple weeks ago, they disabled some stuff like search and they disabled on demand. Um, the sections on some other apps. Mysteriously, they've re-added them recently. So yes, um, search and on-demand is back on PlayStation View. So you can now search for content, view the on-demand area, and more. So check that out. Link in the show notes down below if you want to find out more. Um, but if you've noticed anything changing with PlayStation View, thanks to a reader who sent in this tip that they've re-enabled that. If you notice anything as we get close to them shutting down, leave me a comment. I'm very interested to see what PlayStation View does on the day it shuts down. Will there be anything special? They Maybe a special message or something. So we're going to keep an eye on that. But um, if you want to learn more about that, check out the show notes. All right. AT&T recently purchased Time Warner. That was a hard-fought battle. The Department of Justice fought back against it, arguing that would raise the cost of the services. AT&T said no. Well, now the New York Post has run the numbers and found that since AT&T closed on its purchase of Time Warner, DirecTV's price has gone up 20% since that time. Uh, now, we, we talked earlier about how since January 1st of this year, um, if you count the next price hike taking effect next month, the price of DirecTV has gone up almost $20, like $19 and change um, out there a month for, for their average plan. So there is definitely a price hike. Now AT&T, of course, will say, hey, while well, these content owners are the real reason these prices are going up, they're demanding more money. We just learned the Golf Channel got a huge pay increase, or the Golf PGA got a huge pay increase from the Golf Channel and from NBC and uh, CBS, et cetera. I think it was upwards of 60% more than their previous deal. 
And that money, that gets trickled down to the end consumer. At some point, you, the end consumer, are the ones paying these big deals to not just to sports, but to content, to news, and more. So uh, there is a special caveat you have to remember with that. But I'd love to know what you think. Uh, are, are you still a DirecTV customer? Has this changed your thoughts at all about DirecTV and what you plan to keep it, to leave it, or more? Are you here because you're researching core cutting? I'd love to hear from you. All right, Dish um, yesterday testified in the T-Mobile Sprint merger case. So that several states are suing to try to block the merger. Dish has a deal that was part of the overall deal to get it approved through the FCC and through the Department of Justice, where Dish will buy Boost Mobile from the new combined Sprint and T-Mobile. And then we'll get access to the T-Mobile network and help to launch a competitor wireless service that will make Dish the fourth largest home phone service. Now, Dish in the testimony talked about the case and everything, their plans, and they said they intend to 30 days after launch or after closing the merger to launch their Dish wireless service. So you may very soon get it. Now, we've heard rumors that this new service may be called Sling Wireless, trying to build off the Sling TV name into a wireless world. And now with this merger, um, Dish says, hey, we could get 5G live next year we can launch a wireless phone service next year if this merger goes through. Now, will that merger go through? That's the big question. You know, the uh, Department of Justice and the FCC have approved it. A couple states have dropped out of the lawsuit, but there are still many states who are suing to try to block the DISH or the T-Mobile and Sprint merger that would allow DISH to get access to buy Boost Mobile and to be able to launch their own wireless network. This is a complicated subject. Now, for core cutting, you may, you know, it brings um, the idea that Dish or T-Mobile said, we're going to offer 5G home internet, we're going to do all this stuff. If we can complete the merger, it'll make it so much easier to make that happen. Core cutters love competition. Um, states are worried about competition dropping. Some people have argued that a combined Sprint and T-Mobile could force um, more competition on AT&T and Verizon, who are kind of the, the leaders. Dish is saying, hey, we'll come in, we'll replace Sprint as the fourth largest provider, and we can get aggressive in that realm using our customers, using Sling TV, Dish, and more to build it. Plus, we'll have Boost Mobile as a backbone. Dish has also already, before this, been working to build out their own wireless network to offer 5G internet. It'll be interesting. So leave me a comment. What do you think of Dish's plans to launch a phone service? Would you get a Dish wireless phone? What do you think of at and um, and Verizon, do you think T-Mobile Sprint could be a legitimate competitor to them? Maybe dethrone one of them, knock them down a peg. Leave me a comment, let me know. All right, Disney Plus. We got some updated numbers that just came out um, from analysts that said that Disney Plus added 24 million subscribers just in November. That's absolutely mind boggling. And the interesting thing I wonder about that does that include everybody? You know, for months and months that did pre-orders. For months and months, people did pre-orders. I got one of those D23 deals where you pay, prepay for three years and um, you like save a bunch of money on your plan. And then I also got the Verizon um, discount where for I get a free year of it. So I have four years of Disney Plus paid. Does that 24 million count people like me where I went and signed up before November because I did the pre-book? Or is this just people signing up that day or that um, month, I don't know. But what do you think? 24 million would make Disney Plus the fourth largest streaming service just behind Hulu, Amazon, and Netflix in the United States. I'm not sure about the numbers when you look at it worldwide because they don't break that out here. But this is a massive number. How many people will stick around? How many of those people are like Verizon customers with a free year? Will they stick around once that free year is done? Disney's working hard to try to make them stick around by um, convincing them that they should, you know, stick around for this new content, doing weekly releases instead of binge watching all at once, to try to deter people from signing up, binge watching, and then canceling. So let me know, did you subscribe to Disney Plus? Do you intend to keep Disney Plus? And what do you think? Did they really hit 24 million? We'll have to wait. The last we knew, Disney had in like 24 hours 10 million signups on the start date. So it's theoretically possible that the rest of the month of November that they hit 24,000 signups on it. 
So let me know what you think. All right, NBC next month will be announcing their new Peacock streaming service, um, which is their competitor to HBO Max and Apple TV Plus and Disney Plus and more. And it'll be launching in the spring of 2020. Now, NBC Universal has announced a big party with the general public invited at the end of March, March 28th and 29th. NBC Universal Studios Backlot will be holding an event with all kinds of stuff happening to promote Peacock. It sounds like they're trying to do a mini Comic-Con type of event where we're like, hey, we'll throw this big party, get a bunch of people come out. Pricing for the tickets is a little steeper than I expected them to be, but it's an interesting marketing idea. And now, they already said that in January there's going to be an Investor's Day where we're going to learn a lot about Peacock, which is the name of their new streaming service named after the logo for NBC. Uh, so we'll see. NBC is doing a lot out there. They're making a lot of original programming and more. But my question to you is, would you pay to fly out to um, California to go to an event like this? My guess is this is really targeted towards media and um, industry people to come out to the Disney or to the uh, NBC Universal backlot to see this kind of stuff. So leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of their idea to throw a two-day party to try to promote Peacock. Also, do you, are you remotely interested in Peacock? The reboot of Battlestar Galactica, Saved by the Bell, and more. Let me know. I'd love to hear from you. All right, last story up of the day. If you still hang around with PlayStation View until it shuts down, they have a little Christmas gift for you. They added a 24-7 Yule Log channel. So if you don't have a fireplace and you want a fireplace, Check it out. They have a 24-7 Yule Log channel now. It's way at the bottom of the channel guide, at least on the Roku I test. I haven't looked at the other apps yet, but I know it's on all the apps. If you go down to the channel list, go all the way to the bottom. There's a Yule Log channel. 24-7 Fire. There's, I know there's many Yule Logs now. Pretty much everybody's got one. Pluto TV's got one. You name it. Amazon Prime. I think Netflix. Disney Plus has a Yule Log now and more. But it's one more cool thing. Um, it is kind of fun, you know, PlayStation View is doing some interesting things right at the end. It's just, I guess, it's like, hey, we, we're shutting down. We don't need to worry about what happens next. Let's just throw everything against the wall right now. So that's it for today. Thank you so much, everybody, who has been hitting the subscribe button and the thumbs up. I really appreciate that. Don't forget about our giveaway, the 2019 Roku Ultra, the Tableau DVR, and the $100 Netflix gift card. We'll love to... Um, have you join us for the giveaways. Um, link in the show notes for that down below. So I hope everybody has a fantastic weekend. I know next week is Christmas, a little scheduling update. I'll be here Friday and um, Saturday, but I know a lot of people are starting to buzz out of town and go um, enjoy time with family and friends and more, or maybe just enjoy a nice vacation. So if you're gonna be gone, I hope you have a fantastic week. I'll be doing the core cut today's um, up through Christmas Eve, we will take Christmas Day off. And because Christmas is on Wednesday, no podcast next week, no Q&A. But after Christmas, we'll get right back to the normal core kind todays. Um, but we'll have to wait until maybe the new year before we do the next podcast. So recording a podcast today, 1 p.m. Eastern, and then the next podcast will probably be recorded at CES, maybe even. We'll wait and see. So I hope you all have a fantastic, fantastic week. I'll see you tomorrow or later today if you're around. If you're gone, enjoy your holidays. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, whatever you may celebrate. Happy New Year. I hope you all have a fantastic holiday season. Please be safe. Please enjoy some time. Um, and maybe help somebody save some money by canceling cable. Take care, everybody. I'll see you real soon.